What's up, lore masters? This is going to be a discussion on the genius of the Clark regime in Babylon 5. The man was perhaps one of the more intriguing characters that we barely got to see within all of the series. While people most remember him for being completely evil towards the middle and end, with some inept missteps, few really appreciate how diabolical he was in the beginning. Let's just get into it. When discussing this topic, I find it intriguing to see how he took people, manipulated them, and then turned them against each other. It's sad how fans miss the lessons that we can take from how Clark worked. When we first learn about Clark, he's a side note, vice president. The focus is on Santiago, someone who wasn't the choice for quite a few of the main cast. However, curiously, it would appear that Santiago was possibly the best choice for the galaxy at the time. While his stance was to reduce the budget and ensure no cultural contamination by alien species occurred within humanity, he was very pro-peace and cooperation. This is where I think we begin to see the ingenuity of Clark. First, Santiago's views, as stated, in the beginning aren't necessarily the most ideal, but they could be very benign and even good for humanity. In fact, we see how Santiago is ultimately a force of good, at least in my opinion, for the universe. He cultivates tranquility with other powers of the galaxy, does cut the budget for Babylon 5 true, but ultimately supplies them with more armaments, and has a commitment to the Babylon 5 cause, and seemingly wants to continue the healing from the earth minbari War. Curiously, I imagine both sides on the political spectrum, assuming there were only two, hated Santiago given how middle of the road he was. Those who wanted Terra for humans were calling him an alien lover, and those who thought we should fully integrate were calling him whatever that universe's version of a Nazi was because he wanted humanity to remain human. Clark settling up to this middle of the road perspective isn't a bad idea for him to take control. He plays along, and then when he is in power, takes all of these concepts to their natural extremes which of course is horrible for most any idea that you'd have. And interestingly, while Santiago was in the forefront, we see Clark working in the background. He was making allies with powerful entities, both foreign and domestic. This includes the ISN, PSYCOR, the government, military, the shadows, and others. Once Clark had taken over, he didn't immediately begin bombing civilians or have a coup. He worked slowly. Patience has always been the largest ally of those wanting to incur change. He slowly began to put people in critical positions, plug and play those who would aid him and whom were loyal to only him. Earth Force Admiralty, Intelligence, the different ministries would all become loyal to Clark first. He would even create the Ministry of Peace. Additionally, he would also make Earth isolationists, letting the Xenos do whatever it is Xenos do, letting them plunge into war so that they would not bother Earth Alliance. Though through all of this, the Ministry of Peace and the Night Watch in particular, are the scariest convention for me when it comes to what Clark did. Many people will focus on how Clark was trying to shut down freedom of speech and arrest detractors, but he was doing much more than that. Clark wasn't only outlawing words and ensuring that you can't say them in society. He was changing the meanings of what was being said and redefining words. Additionally, he was creating new ones. He was changing the language and ultimately, the culture. Crime. Yes, there is some, but it's all caused by the mentally unstable. And we've just instituted correctional centers to filter them out at an early age. Hmm. Prejudice. Hmm? No, we're just one happy planet. <laughs> well, all right, there's the Marsies, but that won't change until they stop fighting the Earth role. And w when exactly did all this happen? When we rewrote the dictionary. Captain, you're a good man. You're a fine soldier, a leader. You understand that sometimes, before you can deal with a problem, you have to redefine it. But you can't deal with the problems by pretending they don't exist. There's no need to embarrass our leaders by pointing out the flaws in our society that they're aware of and dealing with in their own way. Because all you need to do to subdue a populace is ban certain terminology and enforce a social norm that, quote unquote, others, anyone who doesn't follow that methodology. And those who resist, turn their objections into a slur. Some people just enjoy finding fault with our leaders. They're anarchists, they're troublemakers or they're simply just unpatriotic, none of which describes you. And then, once you've changed the words, those who don't listen or don't wanna follow, don't wanna get in line, 
You again, quote unquote, other them. You make them the dredges of society. After you've accomplished this, you don't just make it illegal for the person themselves to be at fault. You blame that person for the sins of those they've been with and even family members. You isolate anyone who would not want to be part of your paradise, your utopia. And that's exactly what Clark did. I was authorized to begin implementing certain changes. From this point on, it will be inappropriate for Earth Force personnel to publicly criticize the government or its decisions. Violations of this will result in immediate fines and penalties. What about civilians? Well, that's not something you need to worry about. Just take down the information and pass it along. We'll take it from there. The new policies also expand the range of investigation to include past associations, families, and friends who might draw others into compromising situations. <clears throat> Is there a problem, Sergeant Allen? Well, yeah. Babylon 5 security is supposed to act according to the rules of due process. When enforcing criminal law, that's correct. But you are now an arm of the political office, and this widens the scope of your authority. You are empowered to examine station publications to ensure that they're ideologically correct. We've revised the rules of evidence to make them more flexible. He wasn't dumb about it either. Obviously, the military and police forces had processes in place to ensure fairness, due process, and all that. So this wouldn't be a matter that the military or police could handle, at least not at first. It would be for the political arm and the Ministry of Peace to handle. They weren't bound by the laws of the criminal justice system, after all. And all of this was stated to stop traitors. The changing of speech, the limiting of rights for the guy you think is the problem, while you let others you deem fit get away with it. You allow them to go free. Because they aren't traitors, it was the other guy, the guy you don't like that did it, that was the traitor. The requirement of giving up these freedoms, at least for those you feel not worthy of them, is only for a time to stop the enemy, to stop the traitor. Isn't all this a little extreme? Yes. Yes, it is. I shouldn't be telling you this yet. But in the coming months, certain individuals will be purged from their government positions on charges of sedition, immoral conduct, even spying for alien governments. With our basic freedoms at stake, no response can be too extreme. There may be some minor and temporary abridgments in the traditionally protected areas of speech and association, but only until this crisis is over. We have been betrayed on nearly every level. And it is going to take the efforts of every loyal citizen to keep Earth safe and ideologically pure. I discussed this a moment ago, but I also find it interesting how Clark brought powerful entities to assist him. He utilized the Psy Corps and the Shadows to help rise him to power, and then, once they had assisted, ultimately pimped them against each other. Both the Psy Corps and the Shadows would be so focused on each other and Babylon 5 that they wouldn't have time for Clark. It shows how a smart enemy will pit people against each other so they won't unite against you. Honestly, I could go on about this for a while, but this was more meant as a highlight for the rise of the Clark regime. But the last thing I will say is this, and it's something that I see even today. Clark generally did not tell blatantly false and outright lies, at least not in the beginning. He would always have a kernel of truth in everything that he said and did. The most powerful lie has a large percentage of truth in it, at least in my opinion. For instance, look at the Mars colony. They had been rebellious for a long, long time, with terrorist organizations waiting to gain freedom. Babylon 5 had been working against EarthGov since just before the death of Santiago, at least from a certain point of view. And look at what Babylon 5 was doing with the psychics after what the shadows had done to them, what they were willing to do. Clark was using the truth to spread evil, and I think it's worthy to re-watch this entire series to see how he did it. Again, this, like several videos, is just a highlight. In order to go into complete depth of the work, I'd simply just have to do a direct upload of those videos. I just wanted to impress upon you, as we go into this, how subtle and manipulative Clark can be, and how something or someone can take over a government before you even realize it. In future videos, I will be questioning the morals of Babylon 5, what they did, should they have done it, were they justified? And therein lies the genius of this writing, because I don't believe Babylon 5 was completely innocent. Nor am I convinced what some of the actions that they did were justified. But that's honestly how we see the rise of quote-unquote evil regimes today. They force the good guys 
to do something the bad guys would do, and then use that against them to sway the populace. But those are my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, guys, remember, our lives are ultimately just stories in the end. Make yours a good one.